be reading out of Acts chapter 2. I want to just welcome those that are watching by YouTube. Amen. I don't do it very often, but I remembered this morning, and we thank God that you're watching us on YouTube from uh, wherever you're at, whether you're in Europe, or whether you're in South America, or whether you're here in the United States, from, from Washington, D.C. to California. Amen. We welcome you this morning, and I thank God you're here. Yeah. And for Robert and, and Leona in Denver, we love you guys. I know Robert's watching because he's always, if, if, if it ain't on, one day he's, Pastor, your service ain't on. I need to know a new one. We love you guys and we and every one of you Sorry, that are Robert. out there that watch us and we just want to say hi and welcome you to our service this morning. Amen. Amen. So would you make them welcome that are watching us this morning? Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 17. Peter was talking to him to to uh, when the when the day of Pentecost came, the Holy Spirit fell. Uh, they started speaking in other tongues and just getting radical and crazy for God. And and the and the people that heard them said they were drunk. Amen. They said, "Man, these Christians are all pale over there. A ten ten Troy, man. They're making noise over there." Amen. But uh, let's see where I want to start. Maybe I'll start from 14. He said, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, uh, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all ye that dwell in, in Jerusalem, he says, Be this known unto you, amen, and hearken uh, to my words. He says, for, for these are not drunk, drunken as you suppose, uh, seeing it is but the, but the third hour of the day. He said, verse 16, But this is, that, this, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass that in the last days, he says, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall preach. Amen. He said, and your, your young men shall see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Amen. I'm going to tell you in a minute about a dream, so I must be old. <laughs> I used to have visions, now I'm having dreams. I think I've moved into old age. <laughs> Verse 18 says, and on my servants and my, ma my handmaidens, which is women, amen, he said, I will pour out of my out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Yeah. He said, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood, now these are the signs in the last days, blood and fire and vapors of smoke or billows of smoke. He says, the sun, here goes, shall be dark or turned into dark, darkness and the moon into blood before that great and, and notable day of the Lord comes. Verse 21, and it shall come to pass, after all this stuff, he said, this is going to come to pass, that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we're going to talk about the day of the Lord, amen, the coming of the Lord, amen. Because the other night I told you I had a dream the other night. And, uh, you know, I don't usually have dreams, but when they do, they're significant. Amen. And the other night I had a dream, and I can't really remember everything that was happening, but I do remember a moment in time where the Lord, where it was like, this is it. He says, the Lord was about to set something else in order. And it's almost like, um, it's almost like connections. Uh, 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 you know, Emmanuel, the other day you made a, a, an invention, you and uh, Lexi. And you, you made something with batteries, right? Yeah. And, and what did it do? Turn on a little light or something? It, uh, it, it was a copper wire and began to spin. A copper wire, something began to spin, but, but you had to take two ends, right? Yeah. Put one end on the battery and one end on the other battery, and then it would spin. Yeah. It, it completed the circuit, right? I mean, a, you know what I mean? A flow, a current. Mm -hmm. And, it, and when, it went, when, you tech, when you touch those wires to the battery, whatever he had begin to spin because of the copper wire, you know what I mean? And a lot of times in the old times, uh, uh, they used stuff like that, you know what I mean? A lot of copper, a lot of old tubings, 
You know, like the TVs in the olden days had tubes, and they had all this stuff, but they, it was like there's two connections, and, and this was what was happening, and I don't really know exactly what it was, but the Lord had the first connection already in place. And I'm looking at it, and I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm seeing, and I'm recognizing that it's going to be a current. Something, as soon as he places the other one on, is going to make a current. And, it's going to, and, that, and that was the, the rapture of the church, and it was about to take place. And the Lord spoke to me, and I know it was him, because it wasn't a, 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 a you know, you think of Jesus talking, Hey guys, how you doing? It's me, Jesus. But when this vo voice spoke, it, it sounded like, the, you know, in Revelation where it says his voice was like many waters or like a trumpet blast. Something you knew wasn't a man's voice. And when he spoke, I understood it in English, but it was, uh, it was the Lord speaking in, a, in, in, a, in his voice. And he said, son, I'm about to come. And he was about to make that connection, and I knew, as soon as he does, it's done, you know what I mean? And, 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 and it was like, I, I didn't feel afraid, I didn't feel anything, I just felt, wow, it's going to happen. Nobody's ready, Lord. They're not ready, God. But needless to say, he was going to rapture his church. You with me? Quickly, get me Second Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. So it talks about the, the, the taking up of the church. Amen. But 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 that's what's called the rapture. Listen, guys, we're living in some times right now that are heavy duty. They're heavy duty. Last night we went to a thing called the Tough Man Contest. I didn't want to go. They made me go. Andrea made me go. And my wife made me go. Uh, because I already knew what it was going to be like. It wasn't really even fascinating to me. You know what I mean? It was, it was just kind of all right. But, I, you know what I mean? I already knew what was there. I already know that crowd that's there. And I don't like that. You with me? But they were drunk. They were cussing. They were smoking weed. They were fighting. Yep. You with me? Yep. And, and, and it's like you just go to watch some fights. And, and it's, but it's, you know who it is. It's the same old, same old. Yeah. Right. And I'm asking the Lord. And, and, and you got to understand that, the, that, that we're, talk, we're going to talk about the coming of the Lord. Amen. But the Lord talks in Genesis chapter 6, verse like 3 to, I don't know, 3, 5, 3 to 6, something like that. talks about God uh, looking upon the earth. And some of you may have seen the movie Noah that was so phony. And, you know, I mean, it was just like beyond my imagination with rock monsters that were angels and all this stuff. And I'm like, man, that's so far from the Bible. You know what I mean? But God spoke to Noah and told Noah, I want you to build an ark. Because the Lord looked and he seen the earth and the earth was with the men, their hearts. He said, everything they think of is evil. And he got sick in his heart. It grieved him. He said, I'm going to bring a flood and I'm going to kill them all. He said they were drinking, giving in, in, in marriage, they were partying, they were doing living life as if, as if, you know what I mean, there is no tomorrow. Like they were just going to live forever. And Moses, or Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Noah would tell him, you guys need to get right. You guys need to come and help me build this ark and help me build the church. You with me? Where's Julio at? Somebody grab Julio and tell him, come fix this. But he... But, but Noah, you know what I mean? He would preach to the people. I don't know how long, I can't remember, 120 years? He built the ark. And that's a long time to preach. That's a long time to be telling them out there, hey, listen, homeboy, you guys need to get saved. Sister, you need to stop your little wayward ways and chasing all these men. You need to give your life to Jesus or you're going to miss the boat. Now she wants to go. You with me? Uh, you know what I mean? And, 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 and last night when I seen all this happening, I was like, these people don't change, God. And I said to myself, what is the difference between us that are here from our church and them? And God said, he said, son, it's, 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 he says, it's because you, you, you chose to believe. It's because you turned to me in belief and you let me change your life. They believe in me, but they don't turn to me. Right. You with me? And they don't let me change their life. They want to live like that. Talk about what? West Side Home? All this, the drunkards fighting and all this. And I'm like, oh, dear Jesus. I'm like, man, alive. You know what I mean? It's, why don't you change? You with me? Not everybody's going to be saved. Not even including some of your family members. They're not going to make it. Because they don't make a choice to turn to God. Why are you here this morning? 
Because you somehow made a choice to turn to the Lord. Some of you are here for the first time or, or, or just coming and stuff, and you're making a choice even though you may not even understand it. You're saying, you know what, I, 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 he's the only hope I have. And I'm telling you this morning, he's the only hope you have. There is no other hope. You can't do it on your own. You can't quit on your own. You can't stop on your own. There's no way. There's no way. Will can only go a certain a certain way. I was a drunk all my life. I used to get high, do drugs, and I tell people I quit drinking one time. It was the worst three days of my life because I couldn't do it on my own. They said, "Did you used to smoke cigarettes?" I said, "Yes, but only when I was drinking." I was drunk every day. <laughs> But I made a choice in my life. Nobody made me. That's right. I was blind. I was all jacked up. My wife left me, everything, and I was at the lowest point in my life. And I didn't have to turn to God. That's right. Amen. I had the homies Amen. coming to my room. Yeah. I had my friends there saying, hey, man, you wait. Let's get this guy. Let's do this. Let's do that. I could have just said, easily said, you know what? Hey, maybe I'll get better. Let's kill this vato. Let's do this, man. You know what I mean? It's to the, the hubcaps fall off. Vato loco for life and all this. I could have made those decisions. I made a choice to change. My friends were right there. I said, listen, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to give my life to the Lord. I'm going to change, man. Amen. I didn't change for my wife. I didn't change for my children. I changed because I wanted a new life. I wanted God in my life. I didn't know all the stuff I know today, all the stuff I tell you. I don't know. Maybe that's the problem is that you know too much. Like spoiled kids. Why work? Why labor? Why pray? Well, God's just good anyway. So you don't know how it is to labor in prayer. You don't know what it is to suffer and to, and to hold on to God's word when, when, when nobody else is holding on to God's word. Some of you are tasting that now. Because you thought you'd get saved and all your family would just run with you. And you realize now they're running away from you because of the choice. And some of you are almost tempted to go back with them because you don't want to serve God alone. You want to either you come with me or I'm not coming. I'll go to hell with you guys. You need to make your mind up today. Amen. Because Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And that ark, listen, is the cross. That ark is Jesus Christ. And there's a day where that where that where the door on that ark was shut. Yeah. You with me? And no, and when it began to rain and when it began the water began to rise, you guys have seen pictures, you guys have seen movies where the people are pounding outside in the water on the door open up. But see, God, Noah couldn't open up, or he might have, because I probably would have opened up if it would have been you. Yeah. I'd have seen you out there and say, you know what, you 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 burned me, you did all this to the church, you talked about us and this and that, but you know what? I still have uh, you know, I'm in a heart and I'm gonna open the door and bring you in. But it wasn't, and God knew. He, God's the one that shut the door, not Noah. Right. Noah didn't have big ropes and use elephants to shut that huge door. God shut the door, and once the door shut, you ain't getting in, baby. I don't care what you say, how hard you cry, you're not getting in. The time to get into the church, the time to get into the kingdom is now. Amen. The time to serve the Lord is now, not when you're in a box. Oh, well, maybe God will have mercy on me. When your breath is taken, there's no more hope for you. When you're in a box, there's no praying for your soul to be saved. Uh, you with me? That's what we're taught. You know, we'll, we'll pray for them because they go to purgatory. And purgatory, they'll suffer. But if we light enough, pay for enough candles and light enough candles and give enough money, the Lord will have mercy and bring them out of purgatory and they can go to heaven. That's the lie from the devil. Right. There is no purgatory. Once you're done, once you've taken your last breath, it is over. Your hope is done. If you didn't know Jesus before that moment, there is no hope for you. Right. That's why it's so important for you to pay attention now. I know you struggle. I know your friends are pulling you. That guy's pulling you. That woman's pulling you. That drug is pulling you. But you better pay attention today. Because I, I'm not just wasting my time up here. Right, There's purpose in what I'm saying. If you listen, he said, believe my prophets and so shall you prosper. I'm not calling myself a prophet. I call myself just a preacher. Right. But if you believe the preachers and what they're saying to you, you're going to prosper. Yeah. You're going to live. You're going to, you with me? Yeah. 
if you, you know, ah, whatever, that's a bunch of baloney and this and that. Well, go ahead. You know what I mean? That's on you. All I can do is tell you. All I can do is preach to you. You with me? But the all hell is against you today, and it's trying to pull you away from God. And I'm not just talking to, you know I mean, those who are here for the first time or anything like that, but those of you that sit in our services, those who sit here day after day, come to prayer, do all that stuff, don't think you're above this. That devil wants to pull you out with everything he's got. And if he needs to use some fine guy to come and do it, he'll do it to you. He'll pull you right out of church with some handsome man. That, that tells you everything your little heart wants to desire because you're not in this book. You're still in the flesh. Amen. You with me? Amen. And he, you know, that devil's trying everything he can to take us to hell. Right. You with me? Right. And we have to fight. We have to work. We have to believe and continue to believe that God is good and he's faithful. And I God give what Pastor said. He ain't saying for no reason. Right. Some of you think I'm just wasting your time. But I'm just saying what I say just because I'm, I'm making up a sermon. I don't have a sermon this morning. Right. This morning was one of the well, hard because I love it when I come prepared and I God has spoken to me all through the week and told me all this and all that and I got my message ready for you. Today's not one of those days. Today's one of those days I'm saying, God, I don't know what you're saying. What do you want me to tell these people? What other, what are, how many more sermons do you need to hear? How many sermons have you heard already? Some people only hear one and change. How many messages have you heard? What, what must I tell you this morning is going to try and impress you so that you can say, oh man, we got good church. Pastor's heavy duty when he preaches. Man, he's, you know, he's just eloquent like T.D. Jakes and these guys. No, I'm not like anybody. That's right. You with me? Amen. I'm just a preacher. I'm just a voice in the wilderness. Yeah. I'm just not nobody out there in the wilderness. With, you know what I mean? Just saying, hey, God, make straight the way of the Lord. We learned the other night, Thursday night, that to, to, to enter the kingdom of God, you must, it's going to be hard. And through great suffering must you enter the kingdom of God. It ain't easy. If it was easy, we'd have, a, we'd have the biggest church in Pueblo. Hmm? It's hard to really serve the Lord. You want to play games and religion and go to church on Sunday, you know what I mean? There's a big old church over there. There's other ones throughout the city. If you want to just mess around and look the part and wear a tie and, and look with your Bible, you want to look that part. There's many churches in this city that you can go to. But if you really, really want to serve God, and, and listen, we don't deal with a lot of lawyers and, and bankers and all this stuff. We deal with drug addicts. We deal with winos. We deal with women. There's past, there's a mess, and men who's come out of the joint, out of prison, out of this and that. And I'm trying to teach you. I'm not trying to control your life. I'm not going to try and control your life from the party life or you want to sleep around or you want to drink, you want to do all that. I, I'm not trying to control it. All I can do is give you the facts. All I can do is give you what the Word says and it's upon you. You ain't going to be able to blame anybody on that day, especially me. It's pastor's fault. If he would have told me, no, if you would have listened. Come on now. If you would have listened and put it out there and said, man, you, I really want to serve God. And I'm tired. See, some of you aren't tired of that life yet. You kind of like it still. And as long as you like it, you're still going to call upon it late night. You're never going to change. You're always, you're always going to just say, you know, excuses why you can't change. God gives you everything you need to live a godly and an upright life. You with me? Everything you need to live for Jesus. And it's hard to enter the kingdom. It's hard to serve the Lord. You with me? If it was, you know, sometimes it's, you're broke. Sometimes you're broke. You don't have money, but, but see, you still keep serving God. You with me? You go through marital fights. You go through problems like this, but you still keep serving the Lord. You serve God and your kids get worse. They start drinking, doing drugs and having sex and all this stuff. And it, it blows you away because you used to do it and it was all right. But now that they're doing it, ah! but you did it. You with me? Come on. Hmm? And now you're tripping out because they're acting just like you when you were that age. You with me? And it's like, we don't know what to do. We don't know. So I'm going to go to church. I guess I'm going to gamble and try church. This ain't trying, baby. You can't gamble with the Lord. 
You can't, come on, Lucky Seven. Come on, pull that thing. Like it's Cripple Creek. You can't play those games here. You can't play those games in the kingdom of God. It's either you're going to serve him and you lay your life on the line. You invest everything you have. You did it on the gambling tables. Lost everything you had. You're gambling everything and you're taking a chance with your family's money. You with me? But now it's like, God, you know, but to serve the Lord, we want to put big old investment in. We want to throw a couple of chips there, call it our tithe. You know, there you go, Lord. I'm not, because I, I don't know. Why don't you know about him? But you knew about the world. Yeah, right. You didn't care about anybody else then. Now it's all my family. My kids, I got to stay home and watch the kids. You never watched your kids, kid. Yeah. All of a sudden, your mother of the year, your father of the year, you want to go. <laughs> Come on now. Everybody after being at the home for a, a month, you don't want to come back and change their family, marry their wife, and do all this stuff. Why? Because they've got sober. They start thinking, and Pastor Ray told them, you're not even saved yet. Just because you've been here for a while. You're not even saved yet. We're getting saved every day. Every time you come, God's saving you a little bit more. And he's trying to get a hold of you. He's trying to work on you. And he uses your pastors. He uses leaders. He uses these people. Some of them are good on the radio. Yeah. Hmm? Be careful who you're listening to. Yeah. You with me? Be careful what friends at church you befriend because they're a Christian. Living like the devil, but they're trying to disciple you. And you won't even listen to your own pastor. Be careful. These are end times that we're living in right now. The Bible says it in Second Thessalonians. Uh, second, is it First Thessalonians? Four, sixteen, and seventeen. Here, hold on. Read this. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them we, who are all still alive and remain on the earth, will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. The so encourage each, each other with these words. Amen. See, the Lord's coming and he said, listen, I'm coming. And, I, and he said, encourage the people with these words. Amen. Because when we, when, now that we're living life, see, even though we're going to church and we're doing this, we've got our mind off God. Yeah, that's right. We're unfocused. We're blurry in our vision. You with me? I remember one time one of the, one of my pastor friends. He, God works through him in a prophetic way. You know what I mean and stuff. And he said, Vince, I had a vision or a dream about you. And he said, Vince, he says, because you know what I mean, because you know, I was telling the men the other night. You know, see through my eyes, see through my eyes, the the harvest, see through. And if you're thinking in the natural, say, man, pastor, I'll, I'll be all jacked up like you. <laughs> But what he said was, he said, Vince, he said, God showed me your vision in the last days. And he said, Vince, you saw, you had the eyes of God in that last day. And you, you had perfect vision in the spirit. And you seen what was happening and all this stuff. And, and he was saying this. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm half blind and all this other stuff. But see, my heart sees. Amen. My heart has eyes. My heart sees the Lord. Amen. You with me? My eyes might be unfocused. My eyes might be kind of blurry or messed up, but my heart sees perfect. Right, I see what God wants, and I know what God wants for our lives. And you with me? Right. And it's heavy duty serving the Lord. Amen. You got everything in this world pulling you down. You got your job. Ain't it a trip? Because we were talking us this. Uh, people get jobs and the, the and they yeah. and the, how they put you on Sundays and Thursdays. Yeah. yeah. And we don't, we, we don't even, we, you know what I mean? We, we don't see, I thank God this young man sees it. He can see it. Some of us can't. We don't see that the devil's pulling us out of church on Sunday. Talk about, well, I'll make it for prayer Monday night, but prayer's not the same. Prayer's interceding. Prayer's praying for people. Prayer's not you getting fed and, and, and building yourself up with worship. Talking about, we bow down. It's the Spirit of God that's moving. Amen. Even men's. Men's ain't the same. Men's is not where we go in and worship. And we're just there to do a Bible study. And it's like, hey, what's up? And most of the time spent talking about stupid stuff that don't even matter. Yeah. 
You with me? It's hard because I have to bring it in and say, okay, now let's get in the spirit. And by the time you get in the spirit, it's 30, 45 minutes. And that's time to close. That's time to leave. And so you're never getting what God wants for you. And it's like we're listening to the lies and we're listening to our flesh. We don't listen to our pastor. We don't listen to what they say. You know, hey, be here Thursday night. Be here Sunday night. Be here for prayer. Why? Because you need it. Right, you're, you're like a junkie that's all addicted to heroin but you know what I mean you don't go get your fix yeah. Right. you're there shaking you're there sick you're there you're, you're, but you're saying I, I, I can't go I got things to take care of mm -hmm. Right. Hmm? you come once a week to get your fix but you're an addict how can you be an addict and no. get a fix once no. a week no. you're a weekend warrior is what yeah. you are yeah. Yeah. an addict needs their you know what I mean yeah. listen I don't know if anybody in here has ever been addicted to heroin, but let, let me ask you a question. How, how many times does a heroin addict need to use a day? Does anybody know? Three, four times. Three, four times? You're saying like seven? About seven times. About seven times a day? And how much? How much money are we talking? Ten bucks? Ten, Twenty bucks? A, a, a shot? Seven times? Three times? Even three times a day? You with me? I mean, how many of you go to church three times a day? How many of you kneel down and pray like the Muslims three times a day? They pray three times a day, bow, they stop there, and everything. The Muslims, they stop their whole world and they go before their God and they kneel down and prostrate themselves before God three times a day, right? Am I right? Hmm? And we're talking about, you know, three times a week is... Come on, Pastor. You mean you ask a lot from me? I didn't ask you to come here. God brought you here. I didn't ask. I didn't ask God. You know, hey, well, I'm here, God. What do you want me to do? Because you know, like the Apostle Paul, we talked Thursday night. Said, hey, whenever you know, whatever you want me to do, Lord. From that point on, he sold out to God because he had an encounter with God. He said, Well, hey, wait a minute. Listen, let me check my schedule here. And I work Monday night, and you know, and I've seen. Wednesday is going to be hard because I got this and you know what I mean and then Thursday I can't make it for sure because Thursday night Friday night you know and all day Sunday I'm busy doing this and that and that's the family time and that oh my gosh you know what I mean this is not something we just came to this is not something God just wanted to help you with and then just said hey if you ever you know at your convenience come serve me they told him that. They told him that. We want to follow you, Jesus. We want to be your disciples. He told one of the guys, hey, bro, what are you talking about? He said, man, he says, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests. He says, but I don't even have a place to stay. Huh? I don't have a place to sleep. I'm homeless. Are you sure you want to come follow me? So you got to count your cost. You really want to be free from them drugs? Yeah. You really want to be free from the from the life? You really want to be cured of that disease? You really want all this stuff in your life? Hmm? Then it's going to cost you to serve me. Huh? It's going to cost you to come after me. This ain't some light little thing you can just throw out into your mix because you ain't got enough going on already. This is something that you, you know what I mean, you sell out heart and soul for. You with me? Amen. Something you choose to say, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. I'm going to go after God with all my heart and all my soul. You with me? And I'm going to live for Jesus every day of my life. You with me? Come on, man. You don't have people up in Denver, a pastor raised church, just kind of taking advice. You know, once a week they'll come see Pastor Ray. And, you know, come on now. That's right. All right, we'll see you next Sunday. That's advice. You want to go go see Dr. Phil? Go watch Oprah. You want that kind of advice? You want to do it your way still? Come on now. He said, go in the world. In Matthew 28, 90, go out in the world, preach the gospel. He says, baptize them. It didn't mean just baptize them in water. It meant get them involved in your church. And he said, and teach them to obey. Why? Because we want to do what we want to do. We don't want to obey nobody. No, you know what I mean? Especially Pueblo men. 
They don't want to tell nobody to tell them what to do. Yeah. You want to tell me what to do? We'll step out into the alley here. And, and you know what I mean? Because nobody tells me what to do. Yeah. My wife tells me what I'll just backhand her. Somebody else tell my boss I'll suck him. Anybody else to nobody gonna tell me what to do. You're still a carnal fleshly man. Right. You haven't even been saved yet. Right. Jesus said anybody slaps you, turn the other cheek. Right. He says anybody demands that you give him your coat, he says give him your shirt too. If they make you go a mile, walk two miles with them. Amen. That's the kingdom of God. Amen. That's surrendering to Christ. Amen. He told that man with the, with the foxes, and the, he said, I don't have a place to live. The next guy, he said, hey, first let me go. I want to go with you, but first let me go do this. He said, first, seek the kingdom first. Amen. You with me? Amen. Oh, well, let me go bury my father. He said, let the dead bury the dead. You come follow me. That's what he said. That's not my words. You want to get mad? Get mad at God. But he's challenging you to a closer walk. Because the time is short. It's like going into a doctor and you're feeling sick and he gives you a, 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 a he tells you, you know, you all, listen, we found something in your body. You only have six months to live. What do you do? You walk out of there, your whole world's collapsed. Your whole, you're, 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 you're depressed, you're discouraged. You, you, you know what I mean? But you start thinking, maybe some hope. And you start, well, maybe, you know what I mean? Just, you've got to start eating better. That's right. And we'll change our whole diet. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Forget the pizza and burritos and all this stuff. We're going to salads and, come on. Right. We'll change our whole life. Yeah. Stop drinking. Okay, I'll stop drinking. Why? Because it benefits me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Hmm? Yeah. You, you can't be doing that no more. You can't work. You can't work. You're going to have to take it easy and rest. And then you work hard all your life. No, you know, well, your whole schedule's changed because they told you you had six months to live. Yeah. Some of you are in here. You're healthy as a horse and you have less than six months to live. Yeah. And you don't even know it because you haven't been diagnosed with cancer or anything like that. It's just like accidents. Yeah. Yeah. It's life. Yeah. Things happen. Yeah. People die. That's what we're, we're here. You know what I mean? We're alive for a moment, a quick moment. And then we die. You never know when. Amen. You're just ready. You're ready. You're plugged in. You're, you're close. Come on now. Amen. Amen. God told him in the last days, he said, he said I'm going to give you an example. He, and, and that's what I was thinking about the other day, the parable. My wife mentioned it the other night in prayer. I think the five foolish virgins and the five wise ones, they were all, and let's just say the virgins meant they were Christians. Five were wise, five were foolish. Which one are you? This side right here, let's say, are the wise ones, and you guys are the foolish ones. These ones knew they had to take care of business. These ones knew he's our, 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 our beloved, our savior, the bridegroom is coming. But we don't know what time, we don't know what hour, we just need to be ready. And we need to, you know what we need to do? We need to invest. We, you, know, you, know what, you know what? We need some oil. Where do we get our oil? We're coming to prayer. Amen. We're going to come to prayer Mondays and Friday nights. Amen. We're going to come to service. We're going to get as much as we can because we don't know. He may come and we have to use all this oil. And it, it ain't going to last one day. We have to get enough for a week or a month or a year. We need to build our spiritual bank up. Amen. And these ones are saying, you know what? I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time because I got to work and then I got the practice and I got all this stuff and I got to do this and I got to do that. And so you were too busy to invest in, in your spiritual bank. Where these ones said, you know what, we have, we have no other option. I mean, he's coming back and we're going to be ready. You with me? These ones couldn't see it though. They said, you know what, it's about my time, my life. And when the groom came, the Bible says they all fell asleep. But the trumpet, remember she said the trumpet will be sound. That trumpet and the blast came. The groom is coming and the groom is Jesus. Amen. And all of them woke up and all of them started to get ready to meet Jesus. But these ones, because there was no investment, they, they had no more oil. They had wasted all their oil. And they're like, dude, you know, let me borrow some of your stuff. I know it was from Pueblo because they were asking to borrow things. <laughs> 
Uh, Let me, hey, give me some money. Hey, you know what? You went to work every day at five in the morning yeah. and did all this, and I just kind of slept in, and I never really found the right career, you know? <laughs> and I am broke, and I, but, 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 you know, can you? Man, you're stingy, you jerks. You guys don't lend me nothing. You guys don't do nothing for me. Well, wait a minute. These people who invested, they were up early in the morning. They were working late. They were missing church to <laughs> They were paying their bills. They were doing what they had to do. And they invested in their oil while you guys are borrowing, wanting to borrow theirs. And they, because they were not, they were, they were righteous and they were, they were godly, but they were, they, they not necessarily had to be nice to you. You with me? Because you should have done what you were supposed to do. You should have been doing what they were doing all along. And when the bridegroom was coming, they said, hey, you go buy your own stuff. And by the time you went out searching and begging and getting money and getting oil from somewhere else and came back with what you needed, they had already been raptured up. They had already been taken into the kingdom. And the Bible says again, the door was shut. Even though they came begging, even though they came knocking in the little window door, you know, a little door on the door was open. And they're like, hey, hey, you know, that's probably the saddest part. Can you guys imagine that? Maybe your children, maybe your husband or wife or your loved ones are knocking on the door and you're looking with tears in your eyes and you're saying, but I can't open it. I can't open it. Remember when I told you before? You refused. The door's been shut. And they said that they went out into we to gnashing of teeth and weeping in outer darkness. You with me? Because the door was shut. These people were ready. Five, that's 50%. Five were ready, five were not. But ready or not, remember we played it as kids? Here I come. Huh? You only have so much time, and I'm telling you, the dream, he said, the time is, he was about to put that other connection on there to bring the rapture of the church. You with me? You know what? I don't believe that. You with me? I, w I don't want to believe it either. I don't want to believe that our families are going to be left behind because they won't listen. You with me? I don't want to. I don't want to say. I don't care who it is. Every one of those guys last night at the at the tough man contest. You know what I mean? It's like every one of those are worth saving. Yeah. Now one of them deserves to go to hell. Right. You with me? Yeah. If anybody deserved it, was us. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. God wants everybody to be saved. Yeah. God wants none to perish. And he's saying, listen, my time is short. If there's anybody that needs to get right, it's us, the church. Right, you need to get it together. You need to get the vision and say, you know what, pastor's not just wasting his time. Jesus is coming soon. Right, and I got to get ready. I got to get ready. I got to be a part. I got to get plugged in. I can't be making excuses anymore. Because you could be like those five foolish. You with me? Who do not make heaven your home because you were not ready. You were too busy. That's what I said Thursday night. I think it was Thursday night or maybe for men. I said, one of the tools the devil uses in, our, in the life of a Christian is busyness. Yeah, right. He wants you so busy, you don't have time to serve the Lord. Right. You, you with me? Yeah. Amen? Amen? And it's affecting your relationship with God. Right. And you need to fight for your relationship. Because you're not going to be able to point your finger at me on that day and say, Pastor, you should have said something. You should have told us. I'm going to stand back and say, Jesus, I'm not even answering him. You tell him. And he's going to say, you didn't listen to your pastor. He told you time and time again. But you wanted to do what you wanted to do and live how you wanted to live. Hmm? Amen. I don't know it all, guys. I don't claim to know it all. I don't think I'm this main preacher and all this stuff. All I know is I'm a voice. Amen. All I know is I'm a voice. And I'm in the wilderness and I'm just, and people, you know, if they choose to listen, you know what I mean? They're going to be blessed. They're going to be saved. They're going to be healed. They're going to be delivered. Their family may get saved. Amen. But if they choose to just stand by and watch me and, and say, yeah, you know what, man, that guy, why does he say stuff like that? I don't believe that. Huh? 
huh? Right. As you know, what, what, what I think is, you tell the truth, now it's what you think. No. Why would God brought you here if it was about what you think? What you think got you in the mess you were in. What I thought got me almost killed. You with me? Yep. And God had to reteach me and retrain me. Do not be conformed any longer to the patterns, to the customs, to the way this world is living. But be transformed, changed, metamorphosized. Be changed by the renewing of your mind. Hmm? This is what changes your mind. This is what washes you. This is what cleanses you. Your spirit is saved. It's your flesh, your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions that needs to get saved. Yeah, amen. Huh? That's right, man. You with me? That's right. You, you made the first step. You accepted Jesus Christ. But that soul is where you need to come into subjection to your church and your pastors and to your leaders and say, you know what, now help me, train me. Because, you know, and, 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 you know, and I've had people tell me this, but you got to be on me, though, because, man, you know, I need that. And then when you're on them, then they get mad because you're on them. Yeah. <laughs> Never satisfied. Yeah. You with me? Right. But to be humble and just to be broken and just to say, you know what? I need, I need, I need direction. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Ephesians chapter four said he gave prophet, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. You with me? Amen. Till we all come into the fullness. You with me of our faith, the Godhead, Jesus Christ, till we mature. Right, amen. You with me? Amen. God send us these preachers and these teachers to help us, not to mess us up and bother us and get in our business. Somebody needs to get in your business. Right. You just don't want nobody in your business. Right. Yeah. You got to understand that in the kingdom of God, God allows people, you, you with me? If you allow it, God will have people get inside your business to help you. Yeah. If you could do it by yourself, you'd be successful. You wouldn't be here. Right. God wouldn't have even crucified Christ because you were good enough. Right. He said, I don't need you to go, Jesus. We got one down there in Pueblo. Yeah. His name is, her name is, right. worship him, worship them. Right. <laughs> you'd be the mother God would be you. <laughs> Come on now. Sometimes we talk about them, we see them, we don't realize, you know, you're the mother of God walking around making it, all your family and everybody follow you and tell you're telling them what to do, but won't listen to your pastor's wife. Mother God. Mother may I I want to read you a scripture and then we're gonna close. Second Peter chapter three. But go ahead and come up, Mom. Would you want to come up or read from there? Okay. Yes. Second Peter chapter 3. The day of the Lord. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to hold some thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come. Scoffing and following their own evil desires, they will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, 
we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. The Bible is preaching to you now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He said that uh, she, she read in there and she said that, uh, that uh, be careful that, you know, and, and to keep your footing because there's unstable people out there and that are talking and they're turning the things even pastor says yeah. around and this and that, you know what I mean? And, and, and uh, you know, and we have to be careful in the same time. Amen. We have to make sure our footing is secure before you're over there trying to save your whole family and you're, you're, you're missing prayer, missing church and all this and you're trying to tell them and you realize before you know it, you're over there where they are. You, you've left your secure place, you've left your footing. You're, you're doing it all in the flesh. You know what's going to change them is a lot of prayer. You with me? That, that, that prostrate position where we, am I saying that? Prostrate. Prostrate, not prostate. That's the first bleeper of 2016. Edit that out, would you? Where we, where we bow and we pray before God and, we, and when they tick us off and get us so angry, you want to fight them? No, no, no. Fight on your knees. When, they, when, you, when your wife or your husband make you so angry and so upset and you feel like Punching them? Don't fight with them. Fight for them on your knees. In the place of prayer. When your children are looking as more demonic and evil as they've ever been, the place to fight them is on your knees and in prayer. Fasting and praying for your families. Fasting and praying for our city. Things like that out there ought to break your heart. When you see them and they're already how old now? 50, 60 years old? Guys you grew up with, still a drunkard like you were when you were 16? Right. Yeah, a heart ought to break. You with me? To know that the Lord is coming soon. And I'm not talking, you know what I mean, 10 years, 20 years. I'm talking He's coming soon. To know that we ought to be the ones out there sharing our faith and saying, Hey bro, you need to repent. You need to change. You need to turn from that because there's going to come a day and I don't want you to go to hell. We cannot be afraid to preach that there is a hell. Not that they're going, but that Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, forgave them of their sins so that they can go to heaven. They have a way. That's the good news. You don't have to go there. You don't have to die the way you are. You with me? I seen a guy last night that reminded me of my wife's Uncle Donald. Same guy, same look, everything. Poor Donald died. I mean, they used to do crazy stuff. He'd drink so much, he'd fall into fires. I mean, he would eat the heads off of fish. and I mean, just crazy stuff. And you know what? Everybody would laugh at him. But you know what I mean? Not everybody was there when he was on ICU. They'll laugh at you like that stupid drinking and drunkard and doing, doing this and that. And I seen a guy anyway last night that looked just like him. And I see a girl who was in front of us who was right next door to Sissy. She was right next door to Grandma Susie. And I told her, I said, hey, I seen this guy look just like Donald. She said, that was Donald's best friend. She said, that was one of the guys who used to hang around with him. And he's still like Donald, all drunk and messed up. And I'm like, when, when will they turn? When will they change? Yeah. They're never going to change unless they hear the gospel. That's right, right, right. They can't. There's no way. That's right. Who's going to preach the gospel? Who's going to tell them? Pastor? You with me? Right. I could. But could you imagine if everyone in you did too? Right. Right. Pueblo changed faster than you think it could change. Yeah. 
Because you tell them about the good news that, hey, listen, we're, we're all we're all sinners. We're all deserving of hell. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. Amen. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died on that cross for us. And that we must confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts and that he died and, he, and God raised him from the dead. He said, and we shall be saved. He said all that stuff in the last days, blood moons and all this stuff will happen. But the, but the final scripture, the final sentence said, but all who call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Yeah. When you're drowning in life, sea of sin, uh, you admit somebody's reaching out their hand to you. You don't care. Well, uh, you know, that's a black man. I don't want a, I don't want a black man saving me. Uh, that's a white man. I don't like white men. Yeah. That's a Mexican. That's an Arab. I don't care who it is. When that hand stretched out and you're dying and you're drowning, you're going to grab it. I think you will. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know this man. He's a stranger and all this other stuff. You're going to grab a hold of that hand and you're going to hold it. And that's what I did. You with me? Right. What is salvation? That God raised his hand out towards me and said, Vince, take my hand. Right. I'll save you. Man. You with me? Man. And I'll change your life. Man. And I told my wife, I said, I thank God for Brother Gilbert Archuleta, who, 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 who was, was Clarence's stepfather, who when I went to church and I started to miss, and I started to, you know, I, and I didn't miss. I missed like one service and he was on me. Why, why weren't you here? He, he right there. He said, Hito, he said, man, you can't be the devil. Don't you know the devil's right there? He wants to take you out. Right. You give him a little bit, he'll take a mile. He'll jack you up. Right. Get in there. Don't do that. Right. And I thank God it only took me one time right. to where I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve the Lord. Yeah. It took people like my mother. And I was telling my wife the other day, she said, well, we, maybe we need to put Grandma Lucy on, on our kids. Yeah. <laughs> You with me? Who argue or fight or in their marriage or this and that. And, and my mom got a hold of me and my wife and I was going to go drinking and she was going to go do her thing. We were new Christians. My mom got a hold of us and tore us up one side and down the other. And she wasn't really even, as we know, it saved. She just said, you're going to stop this stuff. And you're going to love each other. And you're going to be a family. And you look at those kids. And your kids are there. And our babies were small. And she put the fear of God in us. We just kind of licked our wounds and went to our room. And that's what God started dealing with us. You with me? See, people like that are diamonds in the rough. People like that are people who God put in your life to rebuke you at times because you don't know it all. And they did it to my life and I didn't despise them. I didn't think, who does this man think he is? I loved him and he became one of my greatest friends. He said, don't despise uh, correction in Proverbs. You with me? Don't go when your parents or people tell you, don't go, oh, you know, you hate me. You don't even love me. You don't even, you, you remember the way your, 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 your yeah. teenagers were? Yeah. yeah. So you know, you want to, why can't I go to the party? Why can't I go drink? Why can't I? And then you see their kids come, don't make it home. Their friends don't make it home. Yeah. They die in car accidents. They die of an overdose. They die of drunkenness. And you say, that's why. Because <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Understand what love is. Love is not patting you on the back and, and putting the, the, you know what I mean, making yourself up to go drinking with your children. Love is standing there as a grown-up, adult, a mature person and rebuking them at times. And telling them and correcting them because you don't want them to go astray. You don't want them to die. Understand what true love is. Amen. Then you'll understand what the kingdom of God is. Amen. Then you'll understand my pastors don't hate me. They love me. Read, read, read Hebrews chapter 12. He said the Lord disciplines you like a father disciplines his children. Hey, listen, it's much easier coming from me than it is from him. Because when he brings that fire, boy, you're going to feel it. Yep. Hmm? He says he disciplines those he loves. You don't want discipline? You know what the Bible calls you? The King James? Bastards. Bastards are children with no fathers. God said, if you want to be a Christian, and you don't want your father to correct you and discipline you and change you, 
He said, they're going to be bastards. Hmm? But he said, if you want my love, you want my correction, you want my, my miracles, you want me to save your family, you want me to do all that, then you surrender everything. And then when I discipline, you don't despise it. Because I'm coming soon. And God forbid that you're not ready. And the door is shut on you. You could knock all day. He said, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Huh? Amen. Stand with me this morning.